These two characters, there was two other ones here last, or night before last, and uh, we sat and talked basketball, talked a whole lot of things, but uh, they're my buddies now. All right, y'all get out of here. Kathy, where's Kathy? <laughs> Yeah, she's got to have a seat. And I'm going to wait just one second for Eugene White. He's getting you a seat. Say what? He's getting you a seat. The mic. The mic. Can you hear you? For the people that aren't from West Virginia, where are you from? D.C. D.C. Pittsburgh. Where? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. That's great. Well, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, All right, Eugene, get over here. <laughs> John, John with Hey, George, come on out Eugene White and John Kinder. And they, they're the superstars right here. Yes, they are. Now they're going to pass a lot of accolades to a lot of people. But they headed up our total mine rescue effort. And they did one whale of a job. You know, uh, I'm sure they can give you details that I can't give you. And so, uh, choose to ask whatever questions you choose to ask. So how did you guys locate it? What, you know, what steps did you take? Where did you find it? Uh, we were working standard mine rescue personnel procedures. And we, today we spent all day exploring the right hand side of the mine where we thought they were located. And when we turned left handed back into the, what's called the sub east mains and another location, they were located uh, probably a thousand feet before we were entering the mine for the last several days. Did, did you hear them? They did were you separate? Did you hear them, or did they hear you, or how, how exactly was this contact made? I'm not for sure, sir. And how far apart from each other were they? I will guess, uh, let's go on a map, probably less than a thousand foot. That, that, that's just a guess. What exact time did you find them? 6 p.m. we found one, up, located one of the persons. And at 6.30, the other two were located together. You've headed up quite a few of these rescue teams. Um, have you ever had an outcome like this one? Three people in there for over five days, basically, coming out alive. Able to say hi to their families, first thing that they do. Well, we have had an event that occurred several years ago where we located two missing persons. They've been underground for seven days. And we did locate them. Let me make one comment in regard to a thousand foot. A thousand foot apart in a mine with no lighting is a long way. And, uh, and you know, how they held on was uh, remarkable. That's all there is to it. I mean, you just imagine you know, all the twists and turns and all the different entries and everything in a mine and uh, and to be a thousand foot away is a long way. But let me let me let me say let me say this too. You know, my family's been in the mining business all of our lives. You know, I go back to my my grandfather and my dad, on and on and on. Uh, this is an outcome that I really, truly, in my heart, didn't think would happen. And uh, and these guys 
they just kept digging. And I tried to keep digging. And we tried to not give up. And, uh, and I think at the end of the day, you've got to pass a lot of accolades to, to this family and community and how they just all stayed together. I mean, I brought up a couple little kids here and everything, and they were here, you know, it was four o'clock in the morning, you know, and they had been here since 11 o'clock that day. And those, those kids, they weren't sitting in there complaining. I mean, it, it, everybody in there was united for one purpose, and that's to find these people. And, uh, and it's a real tribute to how West Virginians think. You know, we've got our faults, sure, and we've got issues and all that kind of stuff, and we've got obstacles we need to get through. But we're family, and we don't give up. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, what an outcome. What a wonderful outcome. So uh, all i got to say is God bless these guys and that, all the other people that went out there and just, I mean, have been there braving the wet and the cold and the mud and everything. I went to the mine entry. You know, and uh, you know, I don't know. All the hours are running together now, but at two o'clock in the morning, and it was uh, it was all what you really could just imagine that it could be. I mean, this wasn't a gravel paved road to a place you know that had bells and whistles on it. This was mud and cold and snow and ruts that you couldn't even hardly get through. And people waded the mud and, and cold and everything else. And, I mean, look what they did. It's good stuff. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you. Director White, what was the condition of the, the oh, rescue? Thank you, Eugene. Director Wright, what, what was the condition of, of the rescue? Or the physical condition? How did how did they react when they when they made contact? Did, I'm relief. not sure I haven't got to talk to the team yet. You know, that's, that's the one thing that I'm concerned about right now. Is I have a team of mine rescue personnel that have been underground and working. I'd love to be up there right now hugging them. And that goes for the company, mine rescue team too. All those people we work together as a group. Yeah, we may have disagreed some on, on what action to take. In, in the end, we all came together and it's paid off. And that, that's what I care about. Yesterday, the <laughs> yesterday the soup was called off a little bit earlier. What went into the decision to continue it tonight, and how late were you guys ready to go tonight? Okay, yesterday, we decided that we would start the ventilation bands. We had done come to the point where our teams were traveling under oxygen under apparatus. At the time we got them where we need them to be, they done used all their oxygen, so we'd have to change them out. So when you get to that point in any type of, in any type of event like this, we have got to be able to have good air. So we, uh, the company elected to get some fans and start the fans. Uh, we, we decided we'd try to pump the water. It's going to wait all evening, and I knew the family. So that was hard on them. It was hard on us. But it's paid off because we worked a lot today in 19% oxygen. So our guys had the apparatus on their backs, but they didn't have to don the face piece. So they were able, they were able to go longer, go faster, go harder. I mean, so it paid off. I know probably the family stopped. We didn't care and we were giving up, but we knew what we were doing. The ventilation seemed to be the breakthrough. It allowed your rescuers to get more in there. They could stay alive. Yes. Yes, the ventilation was a key point. And as long as we had good atmosphere, we were going to work to whatever it took. Were you surprised? Did you ever think you weren't going to find them alive? We go into these events not to recover. We go to rescue. Let me say one other thing. You know, when Eugene had to come in and post the families as to what's going on, I mean, how tough do you think it is to walk in and say, you know, we thought we were going to find them tonight, Monday night. We thought we were going to find them, but we didn't find them where we thought they were. And now what we're going to have to do is now we're going to 
step back, and in the morning we're going to try to pump the water and ventilate the mine. And the families, you know, the families are just broken all to pieces, naturally so. And he stood there like a trooper, like an absolute trooper that never wavered. They had a plan. They had a plan. Sometimes it's really tough to be a leader, and sometimes you're really alone. But uh, thank God for it. Amen. The first guy who emerged, Eddie, how much of assistance did he give you all? Mr. Williams, uh, I know Eddie. I've known him for a long time. Uh, Eddie gave us a lot of information, and as we were exploring tonight on the right-hand side, some of the things that he told us he incurred, we did also. I mean, he said there'd be water here. Well, there was water there. So Eddie gave us a lot of good information, and undoubtedly the individuals had moved trying to find their way out. And they were on the other side of where Eddie originally told us he thought they were. And when you located them, were they like screaming, making any noise? I'm not sure. I didn't hear the conversation. The, yeah, they, they did. Uh, that was one of the largest rescuers when they, the, uh, the uh, person that they found uh, heard the noise, the rescuers come, they started to hollering at them. Uh, and then the first one that they found, she told the other rescuers where the other two were located at. That's how they got the boat. Can you identify the first woman that was I, uh, found at six o'clock and then the? That was uh, I remember her name. Uh, okay. Erica. Erica Treadway. I think was her name. The first one that was found. And the other two were found together at six thirty. Excuse me. And the other two were found together at six thirty. Yes. Yes. About a thousand foot apart. She said three bell heads. She remembers seeing the sign, so she had been there at one time. She remembered that sign, so that's where they know to go to with the location of the maps that we had. Did they have lights or food or anything with them? I don't know that, sir. Uh, they, they told us a few things. They said they had a, a cell phone that they were using for a while. Uh, of course, it went dead. Uh, very emotional, I know that. Very emotional. Your estimation, how much longer do you think it would have been before it would have become a recovery mission as opposed to a rescue? Uh, God above, I mean, no doubt. Uh, uh, ventilation absolutely helped everything. Uh, it, it helped the rescuers get to them. So, uh, when you're in that type of atmosphere under, under apparatus, it, it's tough. You're, you're working harder, you're exhausting your office. Thank goodness we can get the thing pumped down enough to start the fans to get ventilation, and that was key to it. Plus, having good people to do it. That meant a lot. Overall, how would you describe that initial encounter when you first came into contact with it? Yeah. Delayed, I'll tell you that. It was, it, was, it was a moving experience for everybody when we heard that. Too. The other night when I was here, you know, we went up to a building not far from here, and uh, and when we got up there, the the you know the mine rescue people were just getting in, in company trucks, and they were getting transported up to the mine site, and as they were getting in the company trucks, I had my window down, and they'd come by me and hit me on the arm, and they every one of them, one right after another, they said, "We're gonna find them. We're finding them. We're not gonna quit until we find them." I mean, you know, it just, it just doesn't get any better than that to me. Any more questions? Listen, guys, it, we thank all y'all too, because you're getting the news out, and, uh, and you're trying to, you know, there's a lot of loved ones that are a long ways away, and, uh, and you've been beneficial too. There's been a lot of people pulling this rope, and uh, you know we got a good end. God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. This is my wife, Kathy, too. She's real talkative tonight. <laughs>